Joe, and welcome everyone to our exploration of the art islands of the inland sea of Japan. The Setouchi Art Islands are a collection of 12 islands and two ports, supporting both monumental and community based art projects. I usually use history and culture to guide through the landscape, but here we can uh, use art and architecture to guide us. Naoshima is the central art island, and I will provide a brief history of the island to assist in understanding the social context in which the art is commissioned. We consider what it means to create art on someone else's land. Setouchi, the inland sea of Japan, is bound by the main island of Japan, Honshu, to the north and Shikoku and Kyushu to the south and west. It is a long, narrow and seemingly calm sea beset by powerful tides. The inaugural Setouchi Art Triennale was held in 2010 and the next is planned for 2022. The event is held over three seasons, spring, summer and autumn. Over 200 major works are displayed during a Triennale of which about 85 are permanent installations. The 12 art islands are part of 3000 islands contained in the Inland Sea. The Triennale takes place within the annual framework of the Art Setouchi project. And so it's enjoyable to visit the art islands at any time. These activities have forged lasting connections with local communities and contribute to restoration of the sea and island environments. Uh, this is Naoshima. Setouchi is the Japanese word for the inland sea of Japan. Seto means strait. Seto uchi means inside the straits. And indeed, four very narrow straits lead into the inland sea. Two at the western end, um, Kanmon and Hōyō. Uh, Hōyō empties into the Pacific Ocean, as do two at the eastern end, Naruto and Akashi. In fact, the level of the inland sea can be up to two meters higher or lower than the Pacific Ocean, depending on the ebb and flow of the tide. This differential creates large whirlpools at Naruto Straits. Here, Hiroshige, Japan's master landscape artist, depicts the whirlpools uh, beautifully, albeit mistakenly, as a two meter waterfall. This is what the straits look like on a daily basis as the tide either flows in or out towards the Pacific. Many of the site-specific artworks reference this power of the seemingly calm inland sea, depicting humans as part of nature. Donald Ritchie, a commentator on Japanese society, likened the Setouchi to the Aegean. He described it with great affection in his book, The Inland Sea. Ritchie visited the Inland Sea in 1971. He begins, and I quote, the inland sea has been called the Aegean of the East. The islands of the shallow inland sea are small, and there are many, hundreds of them, so many that a full count has never been made. They rise gracefully from this protected, stormless sea, end quote. The area's beauty led to its designation as Japan's first national park in 1934. However, much of the wider area was heavily industrialized and polluted during the 1960s and 70s. More recently, monumental art projects have succeeded in strengthening protections for the National Park and its beauty. This is perhaps the art project's most enduring achievement. Art has recognized existing resources to create new values, whether that be protecting the environment or providing new life to abandoned buildings. Naoshima faced an existential crisis of population decline in the late 1800s. As Japan modernized and industrialized, industrialization progressed, island residents were drawn away to large cities. 
Facing this population crisis, Naoshima agreed to a polluting copper smelter being built on the island in 1916. A common theme of a number of monumental artworks in the project is this loss of traditional culture as Japan industrialized. The smelter was terribly polluting and pressure to stop emissions started as early as the late 1960s when Japan's domestic tourism started. In 1985, the long serving mayor of the island, Mr. Miyake, began to cooperate with a local textbook publisher, Mr. Fukutake, to build an international campsite to assist the economy, environment, and the intellectual well being of the children of Naoshima. Due to their groundbreaking work and continued pressure from the art project, the copper smelter is today zero emissions and its e-waste recycling plant attracts new employees to Naoshima. The publisher built his wealth selling textbooks during the education fervor of post-war Japan. The mayor saw it as a way to enhance the lives of the island's children, some of whom had been affected by pollutants. Their plan for an international campsite for student exchange was finally realized in 1989. Fukutake Soichiro took the helm of his father's business in 1986, following the sudden sad passing of his father. He resides in New Zealand and is chairman of the Fukutake Foundation based at Naoshima, which owns uh, the monumental art, and he is general producer of Art Setouchi. In 1987, Fukutake-san purchased all of the land comprising the campsite and the hill above. This land parcel faces a particularly beautiful part of the Setouchi National Park. He handed the land parcel to architect Andor Tadao to develop a master plan. The first building completed under Andor's plan was Benesse House and the Oval. By this time, the publishing house had renamed itself Benesse, which means to, to be well or uh, well-being in Italian. Benesse House opened in 1992, just three years after the international campsite. It combines gallery space and accommodation. Initially, the gallery space featured temporary exhibitions. Yanagi Yukinori's exhibition, Wandering Position, was the inaugural show, and we will view his work in detail shortly. After five temporary exhibitions, Benesse House took on a permanent exhibition approach, and many of the works began to be commissioned specifically for the gallery and the area over which it looked. Site-specific art. The best loved of these is Kusama Yayoi's Yellow Pumpkin, which was installed in the autumn of 1994. This was just one year after she became the first female and first solo artist to represent Japan at the Venice Biennale. No other work so well defines its location. Kusama says of her pumpkins that they trigger favorable memories from childhood she remembers the soft touch of a pumpkin surface. The color schemes could be linked to mental maps of the streets of New York, where she lived for 15 years, starting in the late 1950s. The yellow and black perhaps remind her of New York taxicabs. Sorry. The New York Times claims she might be the greatest artist to come out of the 1960s. She is the most expensive female artist in the world today. This delicate painting sold for US 8 million in 2019. It is from the late 1950s Infinity Net series, which was inspired by her looking down on ripples of light on the Pacific Ocean as she first flew to the United States in 1957. By 1958, she had moved to New York at the advice of Georgia O'Keeffe. Kusama would go on to be a leading creative in the avant-garde movement of New York. Despite this, she was not treated well by the art world, meeting with racism and misogyny. 
Returning to Tokyo in 1973, she found a hospital interested in art therapy to help her with her trauma. Kusama would struggle for another 20 years before Japan finally recognized her genius. And her yellow pumpkin at Naoshima is a significant step in that process of recognition. Benesse is deservedly proud of their role. The film Infinity, which is a triumph of art history documentary making by Heather Lenz, describes how Kusama struggled with trauma and the time it took for her genius to be recognized. Heather spent over a decade of her life making this documentary, a true labor of love. Another favorite work, which became part of the permanent exhibition at Benesse House, is Richard Long's Full Moon Stone Circle. English artist Long has walked, reconfigured, and obsessed over lines for his entire artistic career. His art is made by walking in landscape. He uses line, paths, and shapes to create a journey type effect in his photography and installations. The driftwood seen here inside the Benesse House Museum and the matching granite stone circle outside was collected by Long on his walks around Naoshima. And I agree with Long that above everything, Naoshima is a wonderful strolling island. Outside Benesse House's dining room are the wonderful seascape series by photographer and sculptor Sugimoto Hiroshi. Sugimoto says uh, that the cur curators were terrified of leave leaving his photographs outside in the weather and the sun, but he insisted, and they have survived in the elements for years in remarkably good shape. Sugimoto says of his seascapes, and I quote, water and air. So very commonplace are these substances. They hardly attract attention. And yet they vouchsafe our very existence. The beginnings of life are shrouded in myth. Let there be water and air." End quote. These photographs are also viewable at Sugimoto's private art space, Enoura Observatory, close to Tokyo. Here he aligns a large scale sculpture garden with the axes of the solstice summer sun through this 100 meter long gallery featuring his seascapes and the winter solstice sun with this performance space and the light worship tunnel uh, that you can see in rusted metal, uh, which he also creates in concrete on Naoshima. Back on Naoshima, in 1998, there was a jump from the private precinct at Benesse House into the public space of the neighboring village called Honmura. The first art house project was Kadoya, an abandoned village home over 200 years old. Inside is an artwork by Miyajima Tatsuo. The work endeavors to protect and create something new and interesting from something old. The counters in the artwork submerged in a pond within the old home, each represent a resident of the village. They count down at a pace chosen by the resident and are extinguished upon the village's death. Minami Dera followed in 1999. A new building by Andor Tadao. It stands on the location of a temple which once stood as a spiritual center for the townspeople. Inside, light sculptor James Terrell has created a memory of and in many ways perpetuates the spirituality of this place. He teaches you to observe with your mind, to slow down and observe the art of daily life. Art house projects now comprise seven locations in Honmura. Artists are offered abandoned homes scattered about the town. They use existing things to create new values. They don't just scrap and build. 
They create artworks which weave in history and memories of the period when the buildings were lived in and used. In Kinza here, which was the second art, art house uh, to open in 2001, the artist Naito Rei has used the frame of a 200 year old house. She placed wattle and daub on the walls, but left a gap at the bottom through which daylight is drawn. It is a small confined space. Visitors must reserve a 15 minute slot and are allowed a quiet visit on their own to meditate. The smaller elements of the sculpture only become visible over time, including marbles, discs, and slim strings. Objects you initially didn't even notice take on a powerful presence. We visit another of Naito's works at Teshima Art Museum in a moment. This is the I Love You a bathhouse created by Otake Shinro using scrapbooking techniques to cover every surface of Naoshima's old abandoned bathhouse. Yu is the Japanese word for hot water. The public bathhouse has reopened and is today popular again with locals and visitors alike. Um, the artwork is about the act of looking with surprises afforded the careful eye including the shunga or Japanese erotic woodblock print images printed on the bottom of the bathtub. Otake lives at Uwajima on the island of Shikoku. In the 1970s, he was in London experimenting with punk music and scrapbooking. His densely layered scrapbooks bulging with the flotsam of modern life were begun from 1977 um, while he was still in his, his 20s. David Hockney sensibly suggested to Otake that he publish his scrapbooks, and this resulted in a series of beautifully crafted publications. The scrapbooks also became large scale installations, which demonstrate the tension of a Japanese artist working on the edge of Western culture. His works always demand further exploration, further acts of careful looking. The monumental Chichu Museum opened next in 2004. As the project overlooked the Setouchi National Park, the buildings needed to blend into the curvature of the, of the land. Chichu Museum has achieved this by being built entirely underground. Chichu means inside the earth. Its lighting depends on light penetrating the artificially cut geometric, geometric openings of the hillside. Andor's work is like many camera lenses through which people can see the sky and sea. The building itself is site specific art. Andor's purpose built museum is dedicated to three international artists Claude Monet. Walter De Maria and James Terrell. The Fukutake Foundation's superb collection of Monet's water lily paintings are displayed within Chichu in a pristine white marble tiled room. The approach to Chichu Museum is through this garden, which has the same paintings as Monet's garden in Givonne, France. Monet's garden at Givoni was inspired by a Hiroshige woodblock print. And after 1890 until his death in 1926, Monet only painted subjects in this garden. This is where Fukutake's great collection of water lily paintings was created. Accommodation was expanded with the addition of Benesse House Park Hotel on the site of the original international campsite in May 2006. Park is also designed by Andor Tadao, and the comfortable rooms afford views across the inland sea to Takamatsu. A quirky budget accommodation option is the Mongolian tents from the original campsite, which have been saved and moved around the corner to the beachside, where you can fall asleep listening to the waves lapping close by. The Fukutake Foundation's monumental art installations were added to again in 2010 with the opening of the Li Ufan Museum, 
snuggled into the valley between Benesse House and the Chichu Museum. It is another indoor building. Liu Fan is a Japanese Korean artist who was a central figure in the Monoha movement of the late 1960s. Monoha was a pioneering art movement whose artists, instead of making traditional representational artworks, explored materials and their properties in reaction to what they saw as ruthless development and industrialization in Japan. This image from the power station of art, Shanghai, is representative of Mr. Lee's works. Making one's way through Liu Fan's rooms on Naoshima, all designed for deep contemplation, the final destination is a meditation space, which requires visitors to take off their shoes and sit for a while with his work, a true uh, joy. Today, the population of Naoshima is 3,047 and has stabilized. Annual visitors approach 400,000 a year. And during a triennale year, visitor numbers top 1 million. The island's depopulation, economic and environment crisis has been resolved through art and architecture. And the number of households on the island has increased steadily as young employees of the art project and the emissions-free e-waste recycling plant move to Naoshima. Next, we visit the island of Teshima. This is a good point to introduce Mr. Kitagawa Fram. He is the creative director of the community art project, standing alongside Fukutake's love of monumental contemporary art, financial support and vision. Kitagawa felt the islanders had their sense of respect for their environment and communities stolen by the central government's growth strategies for cities and the urban-based economy. His careful stewardship of relationships between local communities and artists has enabled artworks to be built on someone else's land. Many of the artworks emphasize the ongoing participation of the island inhabitants. The locals remain with the artworks on their land or in their villages, working to maintain the art and acting as gallery guides. In the case of the Teshima Art Museum, perhaps the most sublime structure in the world, the project involved rehabilitating the nearby terraced rice fields. The structure is by Nishizawa Ryue, one of the partners of the architectural firm Sana. And you met the artist Naito Rei on Naoshima at Kinza. Unlike Kinza, this time Naito draws in the sounds and views of nature from above, amplified through two gaping apertures in the ceiling of this extraordinary building. Now, Vanessa does not want me to spoil the surprise of entering the Teshima Art Museum. So allow me to use two images representative of Naito's work. As the first visitors of the day enter the Teshima Museum, tiny droplets of local underground water start to ooze through pinholes in the floor. After time spent communing with water and the sounds of nature, other small objects come into view, including discs and strings, similar to the ones Naito used at Kinza. She explains that the design of the Nishizawa building was already complete when she joined the project, but it was her determination to create an artwork that was seamless with the architecture. To her, the water represents life and she sets out to show how something as small as droplets of water or tiny spheres and discs, which initially are unnoticed, can start to, to feel powerful. There are many art house projects on Teshima, including this original one from 2010 by Shiota Chiharu, who has woven a new entrance to the abandoned town hall. Using disused windows and doors, which are no longer used, 
but, but are imbued with such important memories, they cannot just be discarded. Her weaving frames the nearby rice fields. Shiota Chiharu is known for her intricately woven spaces, which incorporate disused objects. She is based in Berlin, and when she put a call out for beautiful old keys to be used when she represented Japan at the 2015 Venice Biennale, thousands of people sent her their precious old keys. Shiota talks about everything being finite, nothing is infinite. Although she de denies trying to describe her own Japanese culture, her conveying the finite world is actually quite Buddhist. She speaks of a world inside her and the world of the universe and the fact that sometimes these dualities merge. Next is the little island of Inujima, featuring the artist Yanagi Yukinori and the architecture of Sambuichi Hiroshi. Yanagi convinced Fukutake to purchase and save the long abandoned Inujima copper smelter. The architect, Sambuichi, then created an environmentally responsible space in which six of Yanagi's works are displayed. Inujima once had a population of 1,500, mainly involved in granite mining. Today, the population has declined to just 42. Kitagawa's use of art as a catalyst to revitalize the region is vital to Inujima. Now, Yanagi-san has created his own art island, uh, which is about 75 kilometers west of uh, Inujima at an island called Momoshima in Hiroshima Prefecture. Here, he has over, uh, taken over the abandoned school, uh, the <clears throat> town hall, cinema, and a number of homes to create an art island experience. The school provides an exhibition space for some of his and other major artists' monumental works, including this, Wandering Mickey from 1990. This was the Anagi's uh, graduation project from Yale University. Mickey sits in a go-kart, mindlessly rotating the huge drum until the fuel in his go-kart is uh, exhausted. Empty 44 gallon fuel drums uh, surround the sculpture, reminding us of our unrelenting use of the earth's resources until they are exhausted. An edition of World Flag Ant Farm is usually on display, this one of Eurasian flags. A large edition using global flags was part of the inaugural temporary Wandering Position exhibition to open Benesse House in 1992, and that work remains part of the permanent exhibition there. The exquisite national flags made from coloured sand are eroded as ants make their way through the ant farm ignoring the artificial borders that flags represent. In this way, Yanagi questions national and transnational sovereignty. Eurasia is seen here with a seminal work, Wandering Position, in which Yanagi traced the path of an ant with a red pencil as it wandered over a piece of paper. Here, Miss uh, Kimura explains the work. She works in Yanagi studio and is a gracious, informative host, as well as being a key member of Studio Yanagi's creative team. Yukichi is named <clears throat> after the 19th century Japanese educator, Fukuzawa Yukichi, whose face appears on the uh, 10,000 yen note today. Another ant farm project, uh, Yanagi challenges our faith in national currency. 
Um, Yanagi tells a story about the different work ethics of ants. All the works must be created in situ. And depending on the country and species of ant, they take varying amounts of time to complete the erosion process. Um, apparently, ants from California are particularly hardworking. Once finished, uh, the ants are attracted <clears throat> out of the ant farm and the loose sand is fixed. I can assure you no ants are harmed in the process. Yanagi's practice deals with serious issues, and he is one of the first post-war Japanese artists um, who has been openly critical of Japanese society, imperial history, nationalism, and government policy. Banzai Corner uses 349 figures of the Japanese toy Ultraman to question the nature of Japanese citizens who unquestioning line up to serve Japan's economic growth. An addition is on permanent display at Benesse. Banzai Corner's Ultraman sits alongside Yanagi's use of the American symbol Miki in questioning how economic development has affected society. This is a repeated theme for a number of senior artists represented on the art islands. Momoshima is a very pleasant strolling island. Uh, lanes eventually lead you to the abandoned cinema. The cinema is the venue for Yanagi's representation of the Japanese flag, known as Hinomaru in Japanese. The reflection of half of the flag in water reminds us of the mythology of the land of the rising sun. This was originally installed on Inujima in one of the art house projects. Back at Inujima, we need to look carefully at Yanagi's references to the author Mishima Yukio. Mishima was foremost a great writer, but he was also a performance artist and an outspoken critic of Japan's modernization and loss of traditional culture. His final work of performance art was to infiltrate the military headquarters in Tokyo with four members of his private army and encourage the troops to a coup d'etat. After delivering his manifesto to the troops gathered below the balcony of the general's office shown in this uh, photograph, Mishima committed suicide with his male lover. The first artwork of six at Inujima is called Icarus Cell and relates to Mishima's poem Icarus, which concludes his autobiography of 1968 called Sun and Steel. Icarus flew too close to the sun and crashed to his death. For Yanagi, this can be interpreted as a warning against our overconfidence in technology. Yanagi recreated this work in Sydney in 2018. え、そういっ<笑> に閉じ込められていて、え、そこであの自分で翼を作って、そこから脱出するあの、だけど、あの、太陽に近づきすぎて焼き落とされるっていう神話なんですね。で、それがま、同時に人間のテクノロジーに対する過信
を戒める神話としても受け取られるんですが、まあ、その神話の持ってる意味をこの作品に込めています。えー、こ,この作品に入るとこう一直線に見える道これはまあ日本人間の近代主義があのストレートフォワードにこう進んでいるようにこう思い込んでいるんだけど実際はもっとは複雑で。えー、常に我々は何が正しいのか迷っているあと同時に、えーえー、こ,この作品の中にあの三島由紀夫の詩が組み込まれているんですけれどその三島はあの日本の自衛隊の戦闘機に乗った時にこのイカロスの詩を書いたんですけれど同時にそれが、まああのー、日本の、あのー、戦後の問題を複雑に絡めています、えー、なぜかというと三島由紀夫はあのー、戦後、えー、日本の文化がえー、ひたすら経済活動に邁進することで日本の文化をダメにしていってるということを批判している芸術家だ,だったということです。explodes out and suspends the components of the entirety of Mishima's Tokyo home. Yanagi heard that Mishima's home in Shibuya was going to be pulled down and convinced Fukutake to save it. The final work in the series of six at、uh, Inujima uses Mishima's living room, in which the entire text of his manifesto is suspended in gold lettering. Back inside the school at Mishima, we look across to the mainland to a shipbuilding yard and suggested accommodation. The accommodation is Bella Vista Spa and Marina Onomichi. The resort was developed by the CEO of the shipyard, Mr. Kambara, another next generation business executive who believes renewal, not just heavy industry, will be the future of the inland sea. Uh, Yanagi san refers to the、uh, resort as heaven, <laughs> looking down on his little island.、Uh, but I think Momoshima is equally heavenly. Back on Inujima, the local residents have certainly regained pride through exchanges with artists of the c a l i b e r of、uh, Yanagi. Global and local collaborations transcend regionality, generations, and professions. Lost traditions and festivals have been replaced with the joy of the art festivals. Kitagawa has stated that the elders' enjoyment of life was what mattered to him most. Luckily, the Naoshima Thanksgiving Festival continues today thanks to increasing family numbers and children、uh, who are essential to the conduct of the festival. But on other islands, the local festivals have been lost with not enough children to conduct them. The largest art island is Shodoshima. It is known for having two distinct communities, coastal and interior. The interior, in turn, has two quite divided communities,、uh, Hitoyama and Nakayama. The two communities are known for their terraced rice fields and rural kabuki stages. Kabuki theater, with、uh, all the actors coming from the local area, is enjoyed after the planting is finished and after harvesting. A pleasant stroll up the valley between the two divided communities brings you to the Nakayama rural kabuki stage. The two communities were known for being isolated from each other until Taiwanese artist Wang Wenqi asked 
both communities to gather 2,500 bamboo poles each and combine them to build his monumental sculpture. The sculpture was first built in 2010 and is recreated every three years and continues to provide an ongoing bonding experience, not only for the two divided internal communities, but increasingly for international volunteers. Wang was a lumberman in Taiwan and learned from his elders the importance of cooperation in the forests, the care of forests by removal of invasive bamboo, and uh, the elders' bamboo weaving skills. He becomes a gentle director in fostering help to build his massive structures. Wang uh, illuminates his sculptures at night to encourage people to stay on the island. The coastal areas are known for fishing and soy sauce manufacture. Art house projects dot the coastal villages, including this one, uh, Georges Gallery, dedicated to French photographer Georges Rousse. Roos has applied gold leaf to surfaces of the building so that from one angle alone, uh, if you get just in the precise sweet spot, you can uh, photograph a perfect circle. Um, he is known for creating these works in buildings soon to be demolished uh, and then photographing them. The building houses a welcome cafe run by the original owner of the private home, Mr. Ishi Jun. His grandparents owned the house and he repurp repurposed it perfectly as art space and cafe. He is also a gracious host, explaining the history of the house and how he came to meet Georges Rousse, thanks to Rousse's art project in the ruins of the city of Corbe following the 1995 earthquake. The surrounding village is full of soy sauce manufacturers and their warehouses and is a different strolling experience to the internal mountain paths. The art festival has encouraged new accommodation. Uh, Umioto is my uh, favorite uh, with very comfortable Western style Japanese rooms looking out over the calm inland sea. Next, we catch the local ferry one hour back to Takamatsu port. One of the great pleasures of exploring the art islands is time spent relaxing on the local ferries, contemplating the art, uh, having a snooze, or perhaps enjoying uh, the sunsets. Arriving at Takamatsu port, um, the sunset next to sorry, next to this sculpture became an Instagram sensation following Nat Geo Traveller ranking a visit to the Art Islands as number one on the 29 coolest list. <laughs> but uh, the sculpture uh, by Nagare Masayuki is titled Mata Kite no, uh, which means come again in the local Sanuki dialect. For me, the sculpture is important uh, because Nagare was known as the samurai artist and he used imagery evocative of Japanese warriors. Here, uh, these twin peaks could be feudal warrior helmets or twin Japanese castle keeps. Titled Cloud Fortress, it sat between the twin towers at World Trade uh, Center Plaza. It survived the 9-11 attack, but had to be destroyed for emergency vehicle access to the site. The JR Hotel Clement is the best place to stay in Takamatsu. It's next to the old Takamatsu Castle Gardens and Takamatsu Port, uh, from which many of the art islands can be explored easily. Next door is its sister hotel, JR Clement Inn, which is a budget option. The port is graced by Omaki Shinji's liminal, liminal air core. Omaki 
uh, Sensei is Professor of Sculpture at the Tokyo University of Fine Arts. In correspondence, he describes his installation at Takamatsu Port as a gate commanding a view of the future. Illegal dumping of industrial waste occurred on inland sea islands. This sculpture acts like a color chart in photographs. It gauges the condition of the inland sea in photos taken through it. Visitors look out at the view and the space created by the sculpture and by having their photographs taken here, create the message of the work. These photographs help to gauge changes in the inland sea environment. I propose with this sculpture that we should not lose sight and awareness of our own futures. Liminal air then developed into these delicate installations. This one uh, was installed in a building at Ritsurin Garden in Takamatsu for the 2013 Triennale. Your pardon. Sorry. Ritsurin Garden is the strolling garden of the feudal lord of Takamatsu from 1745. Um, the feudal lord lived in the castle grounds we just saw. The gardens are a must visit. I love to enjoy a cup of Japanese green tea in the pavilion overlooking the lake. An easy visit from Takamatsu port are the islands of Oshima, Ogijima and Megijima. The whole island of Oshima is a national facility for people who have recovered from Hansen's disease or leprosy. The island is part of the Art Triennale for very important reasons, and artists highlight the tragic history of this small island. The Japanese government took until 1996 to open the island, 50 years too late, and without apology to the sufferers of this disease. Ogijima and Megijima are close and seen in my photograph taken from the tallest mountain on Teshima. Looking back towards Takamatsu port, um, both little islands are a joy to visit. At the Ogijima ferry terminal, Barcelona sculptor Juan Plenza's Ogijima's soul greets visitors and provides a community space for locals. The roof is made from characters of different alphabets representing the diverse cultures of the world. Kitagawa Fram proudly points out that household numbers have increased on Ogijima and Ogijima's soul is often used for local wedding ceremonies. The village lanes of Ogijima have been decorated by Makabe Rikuji, who we will meet again soon on Honjima Island. Inspired by the weathered houses of the island, arousing memories of the passing of time, his silhouettes painted brightly on wood 
paneling remind us of the sea, uh, villages, plants, and animals. On Megijima, we are greeted by 300 seagull weathercocks alongside the port. The gulls align perfectly with the wind, much as they do in real life. Artist Kimura Takahito developed a series of works under the concept playing with the earth. He transforms the power of nature, uh, which he believes is a universal language, into tangible and experimental installations. In the center of Megijima is a man-made cave with an ogre myth associated with it. These myths appear on other islands and are likely related to uh, pirates who lived in these hand-dug caves in centuries past. Today, our cave on Megijima is filled with ogre tiles made by 3,000 local school children. These tiles usually adorn roof lines and are protective talisman, uh, scaring away evil. Their manufacture is a local craft industry. The smallest island in the project is Shamijima, a famous location in 8th century Japanese poetry. It now finds itself at the base of the spectacular Seto Ohashi Bridge, the largest suspension bridge in Japan. The tiny island is the location of a poem by Kakinomoto Hitomaro. Uh, he is the founder of traditional Japanese poetry known as waka, uh, from the oldest collection of waka poems, the Manyoshu. The poem is by a defeated soldier who is shipwrecked here and buries his comrade. And I used Donald Ritchie's translation. If his wife were here, she would gather for him fresh wild herbs. But upon the hills of Shami, they have already faded. Overlooking Shami is a museum dedicated to Higashiyama Kai. The architect is uh, Taniguchi Yoshio, who uh, recently rebuilt uh, his architect father's uh, design for the magnificent Okura Hotel in Tokyo. The museum has views of the Seto Ohashi Bridge. Now, Higashiyama Kai is representative of the Nihonga style of painting. His grandfather came from the little island of Hitsuishi, which is now part of the base of the bridge. Nihonga are Japanese paintings from about 1900 onwards, which in the face of modernization, attempted to preserve Japanese painting conventions, techniques, and materials. Nihonga use pigments, which are derived from powdered minerals, shells, and even precious stones. The binder is a hide glue and water solution. They are usually painted on washi paper or silk. In 1985, Higashiyama participated in a fax art project with Joseph Boys and Andy Warhol. This was at the height of the Cold War. Joseph Boy's uh, contribution was the figure on the left, a, a vulnerable, defenseless, naked figure drawn in his Dusseldorf studio, which was faxed to Andy Warhol. Warhol added a pop art peace sign and sent it on to Higashiyama, who drew two small delicate plants, which remind me of the eighth century waka poem we just read about the herbs on Shami. Higashiyama's own poem was Ippon no nonokusa ni mo seimei ga tadayotte iru. Even a weed possesses the precious gift of life. In a few simple words, he expressed the whole defense against the cruel idea of war and human violence against life. Nuclear war could have been declared and in the 32 minutes it took to fax this artwork around the world, mankind annihilated. Next, 
we visit the island of Honjima, <clears throat> also in the shadow of the suspension bridge. Honjima was the headquarters of the Shiwaku group of islands, which was uh, which were occupied by pirates through the 14th to 16th centuries. The pirates' well-developed skills of seafaring and boat building were well regarded, regarded in modern times. Honjima boasts a perfectly preserved 18th century town. Uh, this is a model uh, from the Islands Museum. Uh, the streets are enjoyable to wander and include many art house projects and homes open for inspection. Note the high window here, which is operated uh, like a, a ship's sail. The Edo period administration office from 1798 is the original structure. Uh, the shogunate wanted to control directly these islands and their skilled sailors. The building today is a museum dedicated to the Kandin Maru, the first Japanese naval ship to sail to the US, arriving in San Francisco in 1860. Of the 50 crew on board, 35 were from Honjima and the Shiwaku Islands. This is the ship arriving into the US and is, it has uh, its own monument in San Francisco. Back on Honjima, a pleasant stroll across the island takes you to the main port and another artwork related to the Kandin Maru by Ishii Akira. And this artwork by Makabe Rikuji, who we met on the island of Ogijima. Makabe uses a house where one of the Kandin Maru sailors, Yokoi Shotaro, was born. Inside is a reflection pool reminding us of the Pacific Ocean crossed by the young pioneering sailors. This is the artist, Makabe Rikuji, guiding us around his artwork in 2019. Just outside on the beach is Knitting the Sky by Igarashi Yasuaki. Igarashi involved uh, the retired fishermen and their families to rekindle the skills of knitting fishing nets. Igarashi says, uh, and I quote, while knitting the fishing nets, people reconnected with each other and with their memories of the sea and the islands. And when they looked through the netting, they saw their environment with different eyes. Still in the Shiwaku Island group is uh, Takamijima. Takamijima once had a population of 1,600, all involved in cultivating pyrethrum uh, used in mosquito coils. Today, the population is just 15 and none of the locals can access their houses up steps and many of the homes have been uh, given to artists. For example, artists Uchida Haruyuki and Koeda Shigeaki record the passage of time by burning pyrethrum. And Nakashima Kayoko illuminates the dust of abandoned homes with piercing cylinders and slabs of light. This gentleman is one of the 15 locals who remain on the island. He asked if I could assist him home. All of the locals now live on the flat next to the port. Awashima uh, is actually three beautiful islands joined by shoals accumulated uh, by the currents. Its pristine beaches are famous for umi hotaru, tiny uh, glowing crustaceans. Awashima has Japan's oldest sailing school. Uh, established in 1897, many of its graduates sailed the world. The island has an active artist in residency program, making use of the abandoned junior high school. One of the art house projects took over the abandoned post office. Here, the artist Kubota Saya is photographed with the last postmaster. Entitled The Missing Post Office, the post office now accepts letters from anyone, anywhere, at any time, with addresses unknown. Visitors are free to read the letters, which are often extremely personal. And finally, Ibuki Jima. 
Ibuki Jima is famous for iriko sardine fishing. Um, these types of small sardines are used in making the best stocks in Japanese cuisine. It is another island with a labyrinth of hilly streets. Um, House of Toilet stands in the yard of an abandoned school. Sunlight falls through slits in the walls and ceiling, changing on the de uh, depending on the time of day. The shadows cast on interior surfaces suggest the labyrinthine alleyways of the island. Continuing up the hill, I usually uh, get stopped by the locals for a chat uh, before reaching Iriko Retreat, built by Mikan, a French Japanese architectural firm and students of Meiji University using materials unique to the island. The structure is made of objects recovered from the sardine fishery, a distinct way, ways of island life and its customs. And uh, is a good place to rest after visiting all these artworks. I hope you have an opportunity to visit the Seto Uchi Art Islands. It would be a privilege for us to guide you there. Thank you. <laughs>